I understand that he put on himself like a veteran leader. Now days the I even struggle. I say, oh God, one of my biggest things in life is business. I like say procrastination. I want plenty of things to do, and I just jump and prefer to do something else. And you know, I have like we say I have tasks to do outside in the yard. I just give you an example, but I don't want to do that. So I clean something in the house. And I clean something else. And I feel that I clean something else. That is not what I was supposed to do. So I end up doing the, the good thing instead of the God thing. But I feel good about myself. Everybody follow me so far. So we go going down Ephesians 12, 6, 12 now. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Now we all know, even though we are in human form, we walk in a spiritual part. Anybody here know everything about spirituality? So that means we have things that we do. So therefore, somebody wires when coming in, we can't even expect it. So I say again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality of God in high places. So if an attack coming and you're not sure how it coming, isn't it better to come on the full armor just in case? Now if you know you're coming from your chest alone or your back, you can put on your bulletproof vest and you know that. If you're not sure if you're coming for your head, you're not sure if you're coming for your leg, for your knee, for your foot, then it's better to put on everything. We as men, and I'm speaking about myself too, I've seen, and even the, 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 uh, the isolation, he spoke about it. We in society let him take slide. We are standing as a peculiar men of God, being different. Ever since I was a child, I heard a lot of men, a lot of leaders quarreling about, about certain things. And I'm an adult now, with gray in the beard, and I still hear them quarreling about the same things. Not putting any action, not doing what is necessary. Once, I went to a men's group, a older men's group, and what I was looking for was a certain standard. I didn't see the standard at all. The very standard is funny. When I was a child, I was angry because of the discipline and the standard. I didn't want, I didn't want to do that and rebel against it. Later in life, I realized the importance of having a standard. So, if your instruction from God is to not eat meat, you can't say, boy, that meat, I can't give up that meat too. If God gave the instruction to not drink alcohol, then one glass of the nah, I could do nothing. Shandy have alcohol in it. If God gave you instruction, then put on the whole alcohol, not just the bulletproof vest. I say this, it might be easy. Not easy for me to go. But if we want to be men of God, if we want to be able to carry the kingdom of God, then we have to put on the whole suit. Everybody follow me. So I'm going in the order that it appears in Ephesians. Now I was thinking about this. Why it is? Because if I put it on clothes, I wouldn't put on the bed first. When you put it on your clothes, the first thing you might put on. Underwear, right? And then you put everything over that. Now, God ways, not man ways. So sometimes we try to question what God does because plenty of times we do make common sense, true or false. So God said first to put on the belt of truth, embracing honesty and integrity in all aspects of life. And somebody spoke about it before. Be a man of the world. Truth is something that I realize very hard for people to express. 
and believe it or not, I do a lot of couples counseling, and most men dislike it. What do you think about it? Most of us men lie. Now let me explain what a lie is in this context. If your wife cooked something and it didn't taste good, and you don't tell her it didn't taste good, is a lie. I remember in the first two weeks of marriage, my wife cooked something and I find it was missing something. And I tell her about it. And she started, but you see how long I was in the kitchen. And so I explained to her. I said, one, I didn't count it disrespectful. I say, but which this is what I did. I said, love, I appreciate the effort in the kitchen. But the rice, was a, I just gave it was a little too soft. And I explain, I say, you wouldn't want to taste somebody else's food and I find it tastes good and I don't mind who else's food. You wouldn't want when I come home from home and she's and you say, I can cook rice. And you say, well, what is that rice again? I've had a sweet pass by the other man or something else before I come home. I tell you exactly what it is, respectfully, but I say exactly what it is. Truth. There's something very important for us men. Being honest, first with yourself and then with others. Because that is the basis first of the armor. Because if you true with true with yourself, then what somebody can come and tell you? What somebody can come and do? All the wiles are in the devil and all the trick we come in. You already know what going on with yourself. If you already know what going on with yourself, how you could be true? Now, truth is also something that have consequences. When you speak the truth, it have consequences. When you don't speak the truth, it have consequences. So it's which consequences you prepare to handle. Now, of course, when you're lying, you might get away from the consequences for a second. But then it's come worse because it have a lie with it. And the, and the truth of the matter is still there. So it's better to start with the base. And the first thing you start with, when you put it on the arm of God, being truthful, being in your truth. Now, it might be somebody else's truth. It might to be your truth. God told Noah to build an ark. That is his truth. People are around thought, this man is mad. What is this man really doing? I can imagine sometimes somebody where your family was telling him. God gave you a truth. God gave you a man as a man. And it might look like the truth of somebody else. Even if you want to bring it forward, the, the right brothers, the right brothers are the brothers who invented the aircraft. We read some stories about them. They said they got inspiration that man could fly like a bird. People thought they were crazy. I think one of them even wife knew them. But look at us now. If God gives me a moment, if God gives me inspiration, tell the truth, be the truth, follow us who you are. So we go in next. Breastplate of righteousness. Now this word righteousness was an interesting word for me. Doing research on righteousness, I realized Righteousness is not about being right or wrong. It's about behaving in accordance with God's plan for your life. So you can move in righteousness and ten people around you don't understand what you're doing. Ten people around you can tell you that you're wrong. But if you know that inspiration came from God, you have to move in righteousness. Now, I'm sure you have times in your life that you do something and you say, you know, I don't really understand what this is, but I trust in God. And the moment you're doing it, you still say, hey, I really don't know what will happen, what will happen. But in the end, it happened in a way that you can never predict. True or false. That is walking in righteousness. So we start with the truth, we understand the truth, and you build it upon righteousness. Again, I agree. Righteousness is not about right or wrong. It's about the 
even in accordance with God's plan for your life. Can you predict what God will do in your life? If we can't predict it, that means sometimes it will look strange. Sometimes God tells you that you have to leave the country. Sometimes God tells you you have to leave your job. Sometimes God tells you you have to even leave the church that you worship. But God, that don't make no sense. I know, I know get this job I asked him for. God, that don't make no sense. I know establishing something in church that quite leave the country. God, we know long and looking for the right church. What are you telling me that God said to walk in righteousness? And what I say is easier said than done. I need to say this easy for me. But being a man, being prophet, priest, I don't say king, but yeah, I say pastor. So I'm saying that this time. Prophet, priest, king, and pastor. That is not an easy road. That is a road that will take you out of your comfort zone. There's a rule that will take you beyond the economy, beyond the human. But see if we read it for it. And as men, that is our rule. Next we go to the shoes of the gospel of peace. Now, if you're telling your truth, if you're living in truth, and you're able to walk in righteousness, then you'll be at peace here. I say that again, if you are able to express your truth, because many men, again, I'm using it in couples counseling, many men are not at peace because they want to tell the wife something, they want to tell, tell the children something, they want to tell the boss something, they want to see what is really on their heart, but they're not doing it. So if you're not telling the truth, you're not walking in righteousness, then you're not in peace. One of the presenters say, um, so, but the guy, if, if he cheated on his wife, and he had the, the outside woman, the policeman, and they say he didn't sleep for about three weeks, this is what is going true when you're not telling the truth. You have something on your heart to, you have something on your heart that's ready to come out. I don't know if it's ever happened to anybody. When he was in school, the teacher asked a question, and the answer come to mind, but he didn't say nothing, and then somebody else said the answer, that was the answer you take it. No, you are the right answer. Why did you say something? You see that feeling? It's a little piece of that feeling. That's what happens when you keep it inside. That's what happens when God gave inspiration and you don't do it and then somebody else come and do it. Now, I put it that way because being a man and the role we have is highly important. Not easy, but very important. And it's an important rule because even if we think about going out of battle, we have to be very thorough. You can't go out in battle anyhow. You can't go out in battle halfway. You have to ensure and do what is necessary. Now, if you go out in battle or you operate in any of functions and you're not at peace, you might make bad decisions. Now, you can be working and diligent but still be at peace with you. Sometimes we think when we're busy, we always have to be rushing and doing something. Right? We always have to be anxious. We have to be very diligent and be at peace because you know you're operating in truth, because you know you're operating in righteousness. And when you hold it inside, it is, let me tell you, the, the physiological response to lying is actually send a stress signal to your nervous system. So if you know, Somebody asks if I drop. I'm gonna get a drop downtown now. I'm gonna get a drop somewhere. I don't know you want to tell this person. When you say yes, you start to stress yourself on it. If you know you have something you don't want to do, but you still do it, you're stressing yourself on it. And every time that little stress, little bit, little bit, little bit, eventually you start to explode. Let me do an exercise. Everybody stay seated. I want everybody to put on their hand straight. Everybody put on their hand like this. Straight up, not bare, and straight. Straight in line with your shoulder. Right. Right now, your hand light. Imagine that like somebody little problems in there. Right? I want you to keep all your hands there. So we move moving forward. Keep your hands up, right? You can put it on your hand. Struggling, I really 
So you keep on your hand. This is a really big problem that you have. Now, as time going, your hands start to get a little bit. So every little problem that you don't address is starting to come. It's starting to come heavy. Right? You're already for a week, alright. So you can hold it for two weeks, a month, a year. That's someone that we hold it for years. And we become heavy. So therefore, we're not in truth. We're not in righteousness. So therefore, we cannot be in peace. So we step on the battle. Look, look. Put away.
So I added it again. Why have to be thorough? I remember um, doing some research on this. Then soldiers came out to battle. They have an army check. They have a check. One man, two, one or two men dedicated to as the soldiers come out of this. But then they have a check and make sure everything is in place. And the check and the make sure is in place because if you go out, sometimes a stray bullet. You, it might be aimed at you, but you don't know where it's coming from. So I have to make sure you do properly. So we go with the shield of faith. Now, the Bible says if you have faith as small as that, you could move on to it. We hear that a million times, but it's a profound thing. And that must be seen. Even though it's so, if you maintain it, so I'm not asking if you're bigger than a must see, then we go bigger than a must see. But if you can hold the mustard seed faith for even a week, for even a two weeks, you'll even be moving more mountains. So I wonder how much faith it took for Peter to walk on water. Was it a mustard seed? Was that a mango seed? Was it a salmon seed? I don't know how big it was. And let me say, all he needed to walk on water was a mustard seed. So, I'm not saying it plenty of faith yet, but what I'm asking is to maintain that faith. So, even if you have that small master seed faith, hold it. Hold it for as long as you can. But the only way for you to hold that, truth, righteousness, and when you have that peace, then you can maintain that. Everybody follow me as well. Yes. We eventually attacking, attacking pieces yet. The helmet of salvation. In 2 Timothy 1 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Where your mind is. So if you're not protecting your mind, there's a problem. Now, that word salvation. So we will be big enough to do to salvage. When you salvage something, is when it was of no use, or seemingly of no use. And you're able to take it and find the value in it. So if we were born in sin and iniquity, it, 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 we may feel like we have no value. But then Jesus come to give us salvation. So Jesus come and salvage. Right? After we, we fall from, from grace, after we fall from the, the garden of Eden, Jesus comes to salvage what we have, right? And make us whole. So, the helmet of salvation, because now, and this is where it's very important to have a sound mind. If you don't believe that Jesus brought you salvation, then you will look at yourself in a derogatory manner. You look at yourself as less than you really are. Now, in, in common terms, when you're looking at yourself less than, that means your self-esteem is good. So I bring it in practical terms. Self-esteem. I'm sure we hear that a million and a thousand times. But that word, even as simple as it is, is very profound. Self-esteem only means you esteeming yourself. Simple thing, you, know, you esteeming yourself. And now, the wonderful thing is, is that it's not just you esteeming yourself, it's God, it's Jesus already esteeming you. Because if you believe it, so I say that again, Jesus already came and do what he has to do to give us his salvation. He already came and salvage us. But it's if we believe it. But to believe something, you have to have what? Faith. So I'm going back on. And to have faith, you have to be at peace. Right? And to get at peace, you have to walk in righteousness, and that righteousness means the truth. So we go in truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and our salvation. I've encountered many men who don't believe that they will do a lot of God made us in his image and life. How we can take it on with them. How we could allow somebody to tell us that something wrong with us and we're not good enough. When 
and that's why we have to apply that to Because we will have people who tell you they're not good enough. And nowadays, we have a million channels, we have a million things coming in, then we have social media, then we have all of these things that are coming in towards us, telling us who we are, who is not, and what we're supposed to do. So it's very important to have that self, that head of to make sure you protect yourself. Everybody follow me so far. So now we usually saw the sword of God, the sword of the Spirit, drawing strength and guidance from the scriptures. Now, you know the scripture was the meek with the parent That would mean many people, this mistake that would be as for weak or small or passive. Doing some research on it would be meek actually means you have a lot of power but you know when to use it. Let me say that again. Meek means you have a lot of power, but you know when to use it. Let me say when and even how to use it. So if we draw in power from God, and there's plenty power in it, we have plenty power, but we have to know how to use it. As men, let me say physically, we have a lot of power. And one of these speakers spoke about not beating your wife. We have a lot of power, but we have to know how to use it. Whether it is with your wife, with your children, with those under your child, with your co-workers, etc. It's to know exactly how to use it. But before you even know how to use it, you have to even believe you have power. So I can even start going back now. If you don't have faith, you don't believe you have any power. If you're not at peace, you can't be faith. And if you don't walk in righteousness and truth, then you can't achieve that peace. So you understand them how it's very important to why to put on that whole armor. Now, I'll give you an example. Human behavior is thought into feeling into action. Whatever we think creates a feeling which is energy, and energy comes out in action. But when we not telling the truth. When we not expressing our truth, sometimes we will need thought and feeling, but no action. Thought and feeling. So we keep going back and forth, and we keep creating energy, and we just start to feel that we stop. So the truth shall set you free. So if you're not telling the truth, that it is in your relationship, your friendship, your family, in the church, in your work, then you're not free. Of it. And if you're not free, then you're not walking in righteousness. Then you cannot be at peace. Then you can't exercise faith. Then you even have no salvation to even, to even protect. And then of course, you can't tap in to the power of God. So I explain it to every man. And I told it to myself. Why is it important to put on the whole of God? Go down to verse 13 and the end just now. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Now, that's something like verse 11. But I realized God had to say it twice. He had to tell us twice. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, 99% is not the whole armor. And sometimes we might think well, that's good enough. And sometimes even, I say even my wife sometimes, I do 99% of the thing. And I want it. She killed her. So, what will look like? All them things are wrong. But the one percent is still not it. Because if I put nine ninety percent, I don't have one whole of one goal. So in our lives, we have to make sure we full measure. Not quarter, not half, not three quarters of ninety-nine percent. Full measure of the goal. And that is between you and all of them. You can have advisors, you can have people who tell us who you're learning from. But at the end of the day, it's you and God. It's you and between you and God. You will know whether you're being true to Him, whether you're putting on that hundred percent. So wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, not a little bit, not some, not most, having done all to stand. I was reading a, a book by Miles Monroe named Maximize Your Potential. And in the book he was saying, the 
but it must go to the grave empty. He said, everything that the Lord gave you, you have to make sure you utilize it. So when you reach to the grave, you get empty. And that struck me because having done all, no matter what age you are, can you say that you have done everything that the Lord tells you to do? Have you put every effort towards whatever your task is, whatever your goal is, whatever your money that the Lord put in your life? Can we see? To be all to be everything. And if we can't, because I haven't, I, I don't even see that I could fit at all. But if we haven't done that yet, we still need to do it. We still have an opportunity to first walk in truth. We have an opportunity to be in righteousness, and with that righteousness, to experience that peace that passes it all understanding. And after we have that peace, Understand that we will salvage and have that salvation from Jesus. And because of that, we can walk in faith. We have a shield of faith and be a follower of what gave us the Lord and power. And when we have that power, we still be guided by God so we know when and how to use it. And we can do so far. Now, lastly, this is just to show the example. Of thought, feeling, and action, and why it's important to be, a, be truthful with self. Because whatever is in our mind always expresses itself. Whatever is in our mind always comes out in our feeling and then action. And sometimes you think, even as men, sometimes we have a very serious and a very stoic look, but we keep it inside. And then somebody might say, where is your wife or your good friend? Something more for this, something going on with you. And you want it, how this person knows it? How this person know it? Now I'm not giving off anything. But let me tell you, as a human behavior specialist, when you study behavior, you have something everybody is doing, you know what going on in the mind. So it makes sense. And I, to be honest, the easiest thing is just to be truthful. I have clients who have anxiety. It's coming up to me. What is the best thing to do to reduce anxiety? You know what I said? Tell the truth. Because you're not looking to remember. You're not looking to pretend about when you go into a scenario. If you be your true self, and your true self is, is in the image and likeness of God. And then if you know your image and likeness of God, then you can walk in righteousness. And if you're in, if you're in righteousness, then you're at peace. And if you're at peace, then you exercise in faith. And if you exercise in faith, then you know you get the salvation from Jesus. And if you know you have that, So men, you are powerful. Men, you are powerful.
guide our enthusiastically leader of the spiritual of the state. And as you know, the spiritual Baptist state along with Trinidad. Sorry for our Barbadian friends. <laughs> but he left Trinidad in 1957 with the faith and took it to you. Yes? And when, when persecution took place in St. Vincent and they were being driven out of Trinidad again, so they cannot claim to be the spiritual of the state. There's only this thing. So that the, our patriarch is the patriarch of the spiritual Baptist faith. <laughs> and then we coined it and said, expressed as the National Congress of its corporate spiritual Baptist organizations of China today, who express as the we are the spiritual Baptist faith. And therefore, it is my honor to invite you to make some remarks. I got home 
know my friend said that you bring a boy out of boy, so the last thing. I didn't know what to do as a father. I had to keep everything on my own. Then I told him on the to other men coming. When they become fathers, who do they turn to? Who is there to tell them what to do? We celebrated International Men's Day. Many of us are married here. And I saw you all at all when they talk about the husband of one wife. <laughs> and I don't ask Shepherd your hands to talk about lying. <laughs> <laughs> when I look around, and I remember St. Paul wrote a church, and St. Paul said that if a man desires hope to the mission, there are some conditions that he needs. So then if you're a mission, and you're the husband of one wife, who is the lady that next to you for the church? Many of us lie in you because the church is our wife, the church is a woman, and your office is required in the church. It's not <laughs> on the lady on the right side, but we use that. These are the things we need to sit on and have a discussion. So, for the to share with you, I say, faith, for better for me, you are. You didn't think that we just push us. I believe that it's important that we encourage young men, we have to counsel them, we sit down and have conversations. We must have conversations with the men we bring in the ministry. Because I've always said to people, one of my biggest parts of my longest moment I've spent in my life, I've made all sorts of decisions. But on the 20th of August, uh, 20th, 21, and 2022, 2022, when I was in the future of the spiritual practice. And just of course, the road there to the last day is the longest journey of life. Because who told me? Who tell me what it's going to be to be responsible for the spiritual practice in this world? It's a cancer. And I had to make changes from that journey to the world. Changes in my own life. Changes of the way that I do things, my conversation, the company that I keep, the way that I speak. And I have to put on a whole armor of my humility. Recognize that it's not the office, but it's the man. I've been true to my words, I've been true to everything that I say. I Embrace any one of you who want to wear my shoes. I'm willing to do it. <laughs> the reality is, is that to whom much is given, much is expected. Therefore, when I speak now, I cannot speak about me. I cannot speak about just the Archbishop Christ. I cannot speak about the Archdiocese. When you speak, you have to speak for the spiritual practice and so on. What made it worse is that. Within an hour of my acceptance, I got a call to know you're not going to be trying to show down to me in the entire family of the future, but there is no other future.
be part of the world. Stop talking. And remember, we need each other. So we shall bring our bread. Thank you for this idea of having the International Men's Day for the Spiritual Baptist last forum. Chairman, Archbishop Leon John, thank you for supporting Bishop Rafi in this aspect. Archbishop <laughs> Thompson, thank you for supporting the mosque, the administrative body, thank you for the support. Thank you all of you that come. I say thank you. And today is a new day in the spiritual practice here. Because something that men have always been dancing. Take what you have received today and go back to your churches, go back to your community and build on it. Because we are in the process of building bridges, we are not going to build any walls. So remember the test, stretch your hand, be with me. Do every demand, the has to hold his hand. Go ahead. Know that when your time comes to hold your hand, but you ask for God, please may God bless all of you, may God keep you. And thank you for staying over time and your journey from here to wherever you go. May God guide you up here. And to the wonderful ladies that did the thing of serving all of you, we want to let you go and just tell them thank you. So, thank you all of you for the rest of your life. Thank you all. Just 
dedicated, he faithful, he tireless, instrumental. But he didn't tell me all the names of the dance today. All right. <laughs> Everybody came prepared in their speeches. <laughs> you know? Here, yeah, man. You know, men of all this thing. I tell God for you, me, man. This is a new dispensation. You know, gone are the days when we just had to shop, 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 and didn't know anything. You know, there are too much, there is too much information out there now that we should be left behind. And to each speaker that passed today, I'm seeing we can hold a whole panel discussion with them alone. You know, we've got to be informed because there's a generation coming and we want our faith to continue. So I thank God for the men of God who did, they didn't shrug the idea. They, they got on board and they stayed. Now when I came and going down the list, then I saw many in the year, so I had to stay. <laughs> but I want to thank God for you men who stay. Because the race is not for the swiftest, oh, but the battle for the oh, strong, nice. but those that have endurance. So yeah. give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> Many get up and they go on, some of them they have no way to go, they just go behind like a tired sitter. And you know information is kill some people, right? Oh, yeah. But some like sponge, the more information you get, the more you soak it in. And the more you learn. So I thank God for your stay. You know, I thank God for the ladies of the administrative council that did a wonderful job to get us to this point. You know, clean it and you know, preparing something for us. I thank God for so much things today, but yet to see all new men. One of the speakers said he hasn't been in a room with so much men. Apparently, he didn't go to boys' school because I went to boys' school. When I had that, we had to fight. You know? So I'm accustomed to being among plenty as revenue. So, family in Christ, my, my time here is not going to be lengthy. By the way, they say you could have been the only speaker today. That's what we call it. Yeah, thanks for what that was.
I was in that office, and I saw my eyes, when so you have your eyes on the whole screen, so everything you see in there belongs to you. And he started to explain glaucoma and the different colors. And listen to me, if you have belly, you know, but in a, in, in a short day, take care of your eyes. Because here the secretary yesterday, you don't want to go to Hania and go and go and look at the hundred. <laughs> so, we need to check ourselves as men. You know, we check everything, your eyes, your prostate. Because at a certain age, everything goes wrong. You know, we want to die. But you know, we don't want to go through all that stress to die. We can have a nice loving, empty bed that somebody just see. Free from pain and all that. So I don't want to be lengthy. So I thank God for your coming. I thank God for your stay. You know, as you leave, we go and take the child. You know, we take the leave. We get your home safely. Because we need more men to come and congregate like this so we can disseminate information among our churches that we too could be in this first world stage. We can't stay to the world all the time. We need to step up again. Right? We need, because there is so much information on it, we need to get with the times so that we too can survive the times. Right. Long time they have to start to run from police. We have to run from police, no one. Police are running from we. Yeah. And so, because that's where we reach to. So you may God continue blessing you. May He shine His confidence upon you. May He give our executive grace. The glory, the honor, you know, all the good things. Let me tell you something now. We, we ought to praise each other. You know, don't be jealous of nobody for the nothing they have. Because everybody is somebody. You've got to know your words, and especially in Christ. You don't feel it in nobody. Let me tell you, I will talk to anybody. If I walk down the street and I see my pipe, a friend of them, George, Hey, what's happening? You know, I embrace everybody. We are our brother's keeper. Literally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, everything we are to our brothers. So, peace and blessing. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
funds available to you all, so please have them all because we are more than sufficient. And we were delighted to have you present and to fill this space with, with spiritual facts, evil. Amen? Amen. Come January, come December, we will be providing you the information on how to utilize this place. Instead of going to Signature and all those other places, you can come home to the street about this. Come January. So God bless you. Praise the Lord.